How's it guys, Rudini here, and today we're gonna to be looking at the 7900X3D. Now I really struggled to think of how I was gonna start this review, and I guess in many ways I still am. But what do I mean by this? Now, I wanna take you down a trip on memory lane to the 5800X3D, which broke the gaming world and became a world first in Vcash, and just how much Vcash can have an impact on gaming. Now, why do I say this? It's because with the 5800X3D, we went from a plug and play Mercedes where you just got in and drove to something that's more like an Alfa Romeo, which is a beautiful car, but it spends its life being serviced and tinkered with. Okay, so as for the specifications of the 7900X3D, it is a 12 core processor, six cores per CCD with 24 threads. It goes up to 5.6 gigahertz on max boost, but it has a base of 4.4. L1 cache, 768 kilobits, L2, 12 megabytes, and then that massive L3 cache of 128 megabytes. Default TDP of 120, but you will see when we do the test, it is a little bit smaller than that. And we do know that the socket CPU is now a AM5. Now back to the reason on the Alfa Romeo analogy. Now, if we look at the 5800X3D, it had one CCD on the CPU and the V-cache was layered on top of that CCD. Now with the 7900X3D, we've got two CCDs and the V-cache is only on the left CCD. Next is that you have to update your chipset drivers. Now, this isn't really a major issue except for the fact that you can't see the Vcash optimization drivers if you haven't updated your BIOS or your BIOS isn't of a version that can actually see it. Now I'll note because I'll put a picture in front of you before I updated my BIOS and after I updated my BIOS and only after I updated my BIOS was I able to see and install those chipset drivers. So one thing that you're going to have to learn is how to update your BIOS which isn't again a difficult step to do. Last step to do is you need to go into Windows Power Manager to make sure that you are set to Eco. Now, in the past, AMD has always said set to best performance, but now it has to be an Eco with Windows Game Bar to make sure that you're optimizing your core parking for gaming. So what I've done is created a quick tutorial to show you visually how you can get all these things right, starting with making sure that you update your BIOS first. Okay, so of the four important steps, the first and most important is to update your BIOS, and I will show you why just now. But you can do this by going to the landing page of your motherboard X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. Now here's the motherboard, you will go over to support if you're with MSI and you will download the latest BIOS. Now I had to download the beta, I don't generally like beta versions because sometimes there are issues but in this case I have to or I had to rather download the beta version or I could not update the chipset drivers. Again I will show you why. So you'll download that, you'll restart your PC, go into the BIOS and you will flash your BIOS with the latest version. Okay, the next step is to update your chipset drivers. So you can do that by going to the browser of your choice yet again. I've copied the hyperlink just to make it a little bit quicker. And you will go to MD drivers and support. From there, you will select chipsets and you will select AM5 because that is the set. And then just select your motherboard type. In my case, it's the X670E. Now we can see here AMD chipset drivers. Once that's downloaded, execute the program and uh, this will appear it does take about uh, 30 seconds or so just to be able to check the pc's hardware for compatibility okay now you will be able to see all the different chipset drivers click all of them now if your bios isn't of the correct version you will see the amd 3d vcash performance optimizer driver will not appear and i'll show you a picture of that now that is why it's so important to update your bios first now once you've done this click on all and click install now you will need to restart your PC. I'm not going to do that because I don't want to end the recording. So I'm just going to close that for now. Next step is you need to open up Windows Game Bar and you can do that by hitting the Windows key and G. Now the reason that you need to update this just for your interest is because the X3D CPUs in the 7000 series use Xbox Game Bar for core parking and optimization for gaming. To make sure that you are on the latest version, you can go into the settings, check general, and then you can see the Xbox Game Bar version. 
where I am 5.823.1271.0 and then you'll just have to cross reference that to make sure that you are on the latest version. Last but not least, Windows performance needs to be set to balanced. In the past, it was that it had to be set to highest performance, but now in order for game bar and for the Windows settings to optimize the CPU, it needs to be in balance. And you can do that by pushing the Windows key, typing in power, then you will choose a power plan and then just make sure that you are on balanced. And that is it, back to the studio. So overall, nothing really difficult to do there. The only thing that I'm slightly hesitant on is the fact that it's reliant on Xbox Game Bar to dictate the core parking and optimization for the Vcache. Now results, results have been covered by many reviewers ad nauseum, but I have obviously done them because it needs to be done. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna run over the results that I got from testing the 7900X 3D. On to performance. Now the CPU obviously was the AMD 7900X 3D, motherboard MSI X670E carbon Wi-Fi. The RAM was the Gil Polaris CL38 16 gigabyte times two at 5,600 megahertz. Do note that I had the set in Expo. The SSD was the Crucial P5 2 terabyte. The PSU was the MSI MPG 850 watt gold. The GPU was the MSI Supreme Liquid 1490 to avoid any bottlenecks. The cooler was the MSI Core Liquid V2 at 360 millimeter AIO and the case was the MSI Velox Airflow. Now on to the results. I got a little bit of a lesser result when it came to Cinebench of a 25904 set next to CPU Monkey's 27084. But next to the 7900X, which does a score higher on a 29306, noting that the 7900X does have better multi-core performance, but these are still next to the two towers of the 13900K and KF. Single core performance faring a little bit better, 1983 or 1983 for the 7900X 3D on my tests. The sample from CPU Monkey at a 2039, the 7900X at a 2034, but still on the 13900K and KF, the scores there of 2241 outdoing them all. On to Blender Benchmark. Now note that I did not have the ability to find any results for the 7900X 3D. So the only viable solution was to put the 7950 just to have something in tandem. But getting a score of a 408.42 next to the 7950X 3D's massive 575. Then the sample was a 461.48 on the 7900X. We do have the 3900K and KF which did score at a 568 and a 612. So still leading the pack here is the 13900K and KF owing to their multi-core performance. Now just to see how the actual threads fared in 3D Mark CPU bench, we did get a max thread which is 24 threads on the CPU of 11609. 16 thread did fare nicely at 10678. And then obviously we got tapering off results, which I'm not gonna go through because it'll take too much time, but you can note that just for your reference. Geekbench, almost a mirror of what we saw on Cinebench, but the X3D, 7900X 3D rather, getting a 16385, the sample getting a 17257, the 7900X actually getting a better sample between the two of them on 18219, but again, we got Team Blue there still on 20305. Single core performance on Geekbench 6 was not too bad at 2817. Next to the of a 2840, 7900X is still leading the pack actually over all of them, including Team Blue. So a win here coming in for Team Red, but the 7900X 3D just underperforming the 7900X, which is to be expected because we're really interested in the Vcash here. On to the results that matter because this is a gaming CPU. You can see there the scores for 1080, 1440, and 2160, all of these settings set to ultra and doing relatively well well in all scores here. Formula One, same thing, all set to ultra for 1080p, 1440p and 2160. Good results coming in there, but what's really the most interesting is how the 1440 results are so similar to the 1080p. So just showing how well this can optimize your game with the Vcash, but we do see this becoming a very similar pattern where 1440p gaming is becoming similar to 1080p, especially towards the higher end spectrum of gear. The result from Formula One carried through to Far Cry 6, where 
where we can see 1080 and 1440 again this in ultra where we had very similar results and the fact that we had an average of 164 versus 168 and noting good 1440p results coming in from the 7900 x3d Okay, last but not least, we've got Rainbow Six Siege, and we can see good averages coming across, but this is a very high frame rate game. It is a older game, so this was to be expected with a very powerful CPU and a GPU combination. Now onto stats, and where I really wanna emphasize something important about the CPU is just how efficient it is. We can see that on none of the tests did the CPU hit over 90 degrees. Cinebench actually tested it the most, hitting 89 during its test, this is obviously in multi-core performance. Ada, when stressing on CPU and FPU, we hit a max of 76. Blender, we had 87. And then Geekbench 6, 3D Mark CPU and 3D Mark Extreme, maxes of 78. Now the max frequency of the CPU is a 5.6 and we can see it hitting slightly over that in Geekbench 6 in a 3D Mark CPU and in a 3D Mark Extreme, just complementing those TDPs that we saw earlier. So obviously really good results and a great CPU, but the question that we need to answer is should you buy it? And the answer is no. So let me validate that. The price is too close to the 7950 X3D than it is to the 7800 X3D indicative price being released in April and that difference between the 7950 and the 7900 is about hundred dollars so a thousand eight hundred rand i would honestly rather spend that much more or thousand eight hundred rand more and know that i'm getting the best that amd has to offer because the 7950 is a massively powerful cpu and then you'll know that you're actually getting eight cores on that ccd when you are gaming and then you have the best gaming as well as the best multi-core performance if you're not doing any gaming activities. One thing that I will state again is that on the 7900X3D, I was phenomenally blown away by how good the TDPs were, as well as the thermal management on a 360 AO. It really performed well. And with those 73s up to 113s on the TDPs on very, very demanding products, definitely speaks towards the economical value of the CPU. Now for the purest gamers out there sitting on the fence, again, 7950X3D would be the way to go, but if you can wait, I would wait for the 7800X3D, so then we can actually have finality to say, either you should be going for the 7950 or for the 7800X3D. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave some comments in the section below, like and share, and also I will get back to you on any other question that you may have. Cheers and goodbye.